Hey, hey, everybody. It's um, my sweet puppy, Basil, and Chris Hewitt's coming to you from Omaha, Nebraska. And uh, we're so glad that you're here to join us on this Kids Contemplation Friday. Hopefully everybody's um, taking care of themselves and, and being compassionate and, and gentle with your hearts. Hopefully uh, for all the families tuning in, um, you're finding new and, and sweet ways of, of being together and, and sharing an experience. One of the things that Felina and, and Basil and I did this week to make a memory was uh, we turned on our, our Disney Plus and we watched um, the new Pixar film, Onward. And I loved it so much that I got me a new desk toy. If you've seen the film, then you know who this is. And if you haven't, check out them purple socks. Maybe ask a, a parent or caregiver to, to, to check it out with you. Um, I think it's beautiful stories. And I, and I think it's positive things that we all need right now. And, and not distractions, but I think replacements for, for the news and, and for the things that are maybe causing us to, to feel worse or, or fearful or uncertain. So really glad you're here. Now, I wanted to um, sort of show you who's joining us today. And so I'm going to go back to this um, slideshow here real quick, because you're not going to believe this. And check it out. We have people coming in, joining our, our, our afternoon meeting from Australia and Canada somebody all the way from Malaysia, from, from the United Kingdom and, and from the US. And if you're from the states here, I, I put up a map of, uh, of the US and it looks like there's folks from at least 24 states that have also joined us. Now, if you're sitting here with your, your parent or, or caregiver, it'd be super duper awesome if you could actually, I don't know if you're allowed to touch the screen, but at least point out where you live on the map and, and try, to, try to see if you can identify where you're coming from. And if your state isn't colored in here, if your map isn't reflected, drop that in the chat because we'd love to know who's joining us and, and where you're joining us. While you're looking at this map, I also wanted to, to let you know if you haven't already grabbed some pencils or crayons or, or markers and some paper to get some art supplies because what we're gonna do today is a, a little bit of a mindfulness guided art practice and, and a good friend of ours, actually a really, really super duper talented artist is gonna lead us through that, right? So let me come back because before I turn it over to our good friend, I wanted to also um, show you a little bit about what happens in our life. So we got the sweet dog, Basil. Hey, buddy. Yeah. Woke up just like that because Basil knows what's going on. Brought something in here for him. Wait, just wait. And one of the fun things that he does to help us out is um, he has, wait, 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 just wait. He has a job around here. He's, he's a working dog. He, he likes to open the mail. So I have a little surprise for him. I'm gonna show you one of the things that you can teach. Yep, I see you. That you can teach your dog at home, which is put a treat in an envelope, something that they love, and then you can teach them how to open a package. So check this out. Good boy, yes. And there it is. Very gentle, very deliberative. The sweet little puppy, open the mail. All right, well, hey, hey, it looks like we have some folks in here from Austria as well, welcome. Um, I'm gonna turn it over to Felina who's gonna introduce you to our guest today. Um, but man, our dear friend Morgan Harper Nichols is amazing. And, and for the adults out there watching, Morgan and I have been working on a couple super duper awesome top secret Enneagram projects that we can't talk about just yet, but uh, kind of wanted to tease you because there's some killer things on the horizon that we cannot wait to share with you. Okay, thanks everybody for joining us. Felina, I'm gonna turn it over to you. 
Basil, good job opening the mail, buddy. Hopefully everybody's taking care of themselves. Hello friends and thanks Chris and Basil for that opening. So it's my privilege to introduce you today to our friend Morgan. Morgan Harper Nichols is with us. Um, she resides in Orange County, California. So, so we're, Chris and I are in Omaha, Nebraska with Basil and uh, Morgan is in California and she has so generously given up her time today. I wanna just tell you a little bit about Morgan. So she's a daughter a wife and a new mom. She's got a little boy named Jacob who's just 10 months old and if we're lucky, he'll make an appearance, but it just depends on whether or not he's um, feeling in the mood. So we'll see, cross your fingers. Hopefully we'll get to meet Jacob today. And Morgan is, um, is really Instagram famous. She has an incredible loyal following and if you haven't check, checked out her, if you have not seen her, Instagram uh, profile, you'll, you'll definitely want to check it out. It's beautiful. And she is, um, is always doing creative projects really related to grace and hope. And so these kind of intangible, wonderful things that are within our reach, but sometimes hard for us to identify. And one of the creative projects that she's put out in the world is this book called All Along You Were Blooming. And it's full of Morgan's poetry and uh, an artwork. And so if you can see on, on my screen here, the book is just so colorful and lovely. And it's, it's separated into sections related to the heart, the mind, and the body. And I've been enjoying this book so much. I've been reading from it every day. And I chose this reading that you see on your screen here as we begin to uh, get settled in and uh, and prepare to meet Morgan and participate in her mindful art project that she's going to do with us. And so if you would just kind of let yourself settle into your seat in a mindful way. So even though you're already in your seat, perhaps um, let's just bring our attention to our seat and notice yourself sitting in the chair and take a few or you know you might not be in the chair you might be on the floor wherever you are just see if you can connect your body with what is supporting you underneath and if you're standing up that's okay too just connect with that sense of support underneath your feet and see if you can straighten the spine and take a few deep belly breaths so you might put one hand on the belly and one hand on the heart and in this way we can breathe together so let's inhale together here inhale and exhale see if you can breathe all the way down in the belly here inhale and exhale and inhale once more together here and exhale let all that air out See if you can just take a moment here to notice one thing in your heart that you're grateful for. Now listen to Morgan's poem. It's short, so listen carefully. I'll read it twice. While we are, our, while we are trying to make sense of things, may we learn to make peace with things. While we are trying to make sense of things, may we learn to make peace with things. And so with that, let's welcome Morgan Harper Nichols. Hello, Hi, hello. And Jacob wanted to say hello Yay. for a second. <laughs> Say hello, everybody. <laughs> Hi, Jacob. Oh, aren't you the cutest thing ever? Hi. Yeah, what a cute uh, guy. <laughs> hello, everyone. Thank you for having me. It's an honor to be here with you. <laughs> Thank you, Morgan. Thank you. As well. Thank Thank you. you. I'm turning everything over to you. I'll see you um, in just a little while, okay? Yes, awesome. Well, hello everyone. Today I'm going to share with you something that is a part of my 
daily creative practice and that is doodling and drawing and making art even just using regular pieces of paper and pencils and markers so today i'm going to show you how to draw three different landscapes that you can actually turn into your own coloring sheet or create whatever you would like to create so i'm going to hold this up to the screen so here's what we're going to be drawing we're going to be doing a range of mountains ocean waves and a desert canyon so these are three of many landscapes out there these are some of my favorites these bring me a lot of peace even when i can't travel to them i can't go to those places even oh i just dropped it but drawing them brings me a lot of peace as well so i'm just going to pick that up off the floor really quick so what you want to have to begin this practice is a piece of paper and i like to turn it this way but you can you can do it however you want whatever feels more, most comfortable to you but I'm gonna turn it this way and I'm placing it on top of my sketchbook. So if you have a clipboard, you can use that or just a book or obviously a table, just some kind of hard surface or harder surface that you can draw on. So in um, the three landscapes, I actually put ocean waves in the middle, but I think I actually wanna start with the ocean waves because I think it's a cool way to just sort of get your get your doodles out and to just draw it out first without worrying about get it right and you can just kind of draw some squiggly lines so the other thing you're going to need is a pencil i recommend a pencil for this part um, if you only have an ink pen or a marker that's fine but i do recommend a pencil because you can erase you can go back and you can change things if you like so um and then one more thing before we begin, I wanna show you just what's possible, what's possible with this. Here's actually a framed piece of a time where I did a project like this. And this was just using a, a red marker, a regular red marker, and I drew some mountains and a sun. And yeah, so there's a lot that you can do with this, but it often starts with just a regular piece of paper and a pencil, and yeah, it can be really fun. So I have my piece of paper and I have my pencil here. And what I'm gonna do is just start somewhere near the middle of the page here. And then I'm just gonna draw my first wave. Just like that. Then doesn't look like a wave maybe at first, maybe it just looks like a squiggly line. But what's fun about this is that you can keep going and what's really cool about waves, if you've ever seen waves, they go all over the place and they're, some are high, some are low, and they have all of this movement. So you can, however your hands move, however it feels natural for you to draw a wave, you can do it that way. So for me, I'm gonna start uh, another one just below this one. And I'm going to go down even further. So now we have, our second wave. And then I'm going to do a third wave here, just a little bit further. And you don't have to measure this or anything. There's no right, right or wrong way to do the waves, just however you see the waves coming, you can do it that way. Go down like this. There you go. And I even had a little bump in there accidentally, but that's okay because if you see the ocean waves, they're not always in a perfect, well, they're never in a perfect line. <laughs> so you're, you're allowed to have the little bumps and little ridges. Now I'm going to add one up here as well. There we go. Just like that, we have our waves. And now just to kind of paint more of the landscape of the ocean, of the waters, if we were all together out on the water right now, what's something that would be above the water? So the sun. All right, so I'm going to draw a circle here. That's not the best circle I ever drew, but that's okay. 
And can you think of anything else that might be above water, above the waves? I'm thinking of birds. So one little trick that I like to do in my artwork to draw birds is I like to draw just a little V shape like that. So think of uh, the letter V, capital V, and like this, just little birds flying over the water. Now, your imagination may take you somewhere else. Maybe you see a boat or maybe you see, see clouds, but just something really simple, you know, just using regular shapes and lines. So this is our ocean wave landscape, and we're going to come back to this at the end. All right. For the next one, we're going to do our range of mountains. One of the things that I like to think about when I'm drawing these different landscapes is what, how, how do these landscapes make me feel? And what feelings come to mind as I'm drawing these things? So for me, as I get ready to draw these mountains, I think about, oh, it would be really nice to see mountains right now. And sometimes it might, Thank you, a little sad in life if we can't always be places where we want to go. Maybe we want to take a trip and we can't, so we want to go somewhere and we can't. And one of the cool things about drawing is that it lets us paint pictures of things that still bring us joy, still bring us happiness, even if we can't be there. So one thing I love about drawing mountains is just the highs and the lows of it all. You can just kind of go up and down. So you just want to take your pencil along the page, just create a mountainscape, just like that. There you go. And these mountains, they're, they're not all perfectly in shape. I didn't plan them out beforehand. And that's okay. That's okay because if you look at the mountains, that's what they look like. They look different. Everyone looks different. So if you're if you're drawing this right now with someone else and yours looks different than than the person next to you, that's okay. So now let's think about what would be over the mountains. Same as the ocean, the sun. So I'm gonna draw the sun over here. Just a circle, that's all. And there we go, we've got our mountains. And now, what's something else that could be over mountains? Birds. <laughs> you can also draw birds again. So, I'm gonna draw some little birds flying over the mountains here, as you can see. And I think that there's, you know, a little bit more space down here. So maybe, you know, what would be below the mountains, you know? So when you have your mountainscape, you also, the mountains will lead into valleys. So what does the valley look like? You can draw that. Or maybe you can draw what are called foothills. And those are hills that are, they're like little tiny hills that kind of follow after a mountain range. I grew up, I grew up in Atlanta, Georgia, which it's considered, it was really hilly, but they were the foothills and the mountains that were further north in the state. And the foothills, your foothills can go down into a valley, or maybe they can go into a lake. So you can even look at some pictures for inspiration as to how, what kind of mountainscape you want to draw. But just know that it can always start so simple just with some lines. And many of my, many of my pieces that I make as an artist start just that way. I start with the lines and the shapes. So now we're going to move to the hardest one of the three, and that is the desert canyons. So if you've ever seen the desert, if you've been to a desert, you know the desert can be a really dry place and maybe if you're driving by it just seems to go on and on and on but 
if you look closely, it can actually really be pretty. And there's a lot of really neat things to see in the desert. So maybe for this one, we can close our eyes for a second and we can think about what we think of when we think of the desert. What comes to mind? Maybe it's a cactus. Maybe it's the sun shining onto the dried landscape. I love the desert. And one of the things that I like to draw with the desert is I like to draw the, 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 the canyons in the desert. And I like to draw sort of the space in between the canyons. Grand Canyon is a really cool place. One of my favorite places on earth. So this isn't the Grand Canyon, but this is definitely inspired by that space in between the canyons. So the desert has a lot of space. So for this one, I'm actually gonna draw a straight line. It doesn't have to be perfectly straight, but it's just not going to dip like the mountains or the ocean. I'm gonna draw a straight line or a straighter line, I should say. And then I'm going to dip it down into the middle of the page like this, almost like you're drawing a U shape, the shape of the letter U. So you think of it that way. And then to complete this U, we're going to come back up. And again, it doesn't have to be perfect. It's okay if you, <laughs> it's okay if you have these little mistakes in here. It's just fine. And then I'm drawing this a little bit lighter. So let me go back and make it a little bit darker so you can see it on the screen. All right, so sometimes it's also really good to go over your drawings really, really lightly. So you can go back later and, and make it darker if you'd like. So then I'm gonna do the same thing over here. And it doesn't, I actually think it works best if it's not perfect, if it doesn't match the canyon over here. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna draw another straight line here. So to some, they may see this as, a really sad letter U. <laughs> but to me, I see canyons here. I see the place between the canyons. I see the part of the Grand Canyon way down in there that I've always wanted to go all the way down in there, but I also really don't like snakes and <laughs> never, never been down that far because I know that snakes go down in those places. But I like to look down in there and think about all of the people that have traveled here, all of the people that lived in the space and in all the mountains. So now I'm thinking about people. So if people were going to travel through the canyons. What might they need to travel through the canyons? There's a lot of things you would need. You might need access to water, a river. So maybe we can, maybe we can draw a river going in between the canyons. So to draw a river, this is where something in, in when you think about making art, this is called um, depth of field. And what that is, is that it help, it kind of, it's a way of drawing, of like drawing something that shows you're drawing it really, 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 really far away. So we're gonna think of these canyons as being kind of far away. So the river that we're gonna draw, it's gonna start off small because it's far away. It's like something you see in a distance. So maybe from your nearest window, you can see trees really far away and the trees look really small. And maybe you can see a building far away or in, you know, if, if clouds in the sky, maybe they seem small. So I'm gonna start off really small, a little squiggly line. And then the line's gonna get bigger and bigger as we go along. As I draw this, I think about the people that maybe walked along the river. And there we go, we have a, our little river through the canyons. And you don't have to stop there. You can add a little pathway alongside the river. In many places in the world, people will walk along the path of the river. So maybe you could draw a little path, maybe you could draw people and just take a moment to think about who, who may have been there, who, who may have walked that path. So to finish off our, our desert canyon landscape, I'm gonna do, I'm gonna draw the sun again because there's a sun on, the sun is beaming onto the landscape just like the sun is beaming 
on the ocean, over the mountains. And because I love the desert and because I can see this bright sun just filling the space, I'm gonna draw the sun a little bit bigger than I do it the first two times. I'm actually gonna lay my piece of paper down and I'm just drawing a really big circle. And I'll show you first and then you can try it yourself if you would like to draw the sun too. So there you go. A really big sun. And you know when the sun looks really big a lot of times at sunset. So in my mind, the sun, the sun is starting to set over the canyons. And I'm seeing orange and pink and all of those warm desert colors. So there we go. That is our desert landscape. All right, so now that we have our three landscapes, we have, we've traveled quite a bit with this. We've gone to three, three places. It's really, really neat all over the world. We've got our desert canyons. We've got our ocean waves. We have our range of mountains, our mountainscape. So now I want to show you how you can turn one of these pages into a coloring sheet. So I'm going to use the mountain page. Now this is an optional step. This next step is an optional step. So if you don't have any markers, that's okay. But in order to create the outline of this um, landscape so we can kind of color a little bit better. I am going to use a marker here. I've got a Sharpie, but any kind of marker will do. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to just trace over my pencil drawing. So, and you can clean it up with your, with the eraser if you want, you know, maybe if you don't want to have your pencil, pencil drawings in there. And what I'm doing here is I'm taking this pencil drawing from one place to another. It started as a pencil drawing and now it's about to take on a new life. So you can already see it's becoming something a little different as we trace over our pencil drawings. And again, if you don't have to have markers, it's okay if you don't. And of course, if you do have markers, it's okay to take that eraser and go back and you can completely erase that line. And one of the really neat things about drawing, that even if you take a drawing class or an art class, it's one of the things that they're gonna talk a lot about are lines and shapes. So even though this is a simple landscape, it's the beginning of so many things. Drawing lines and shapes can take you so many places. You can draw pictures of your family. You can draw pictures of what you see out your window. There's a lot that you can do with, with drawing shapes, even if you don't feel like you're a good artist. So that's why I love, love using lines and shapes. So from here, now that I've really outlined this, and again, you don't have to outline it if you want, I've got some crayons right here. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna color in the landscape. So I'm actually gonna start with the sun. So what color, what do you wanna color the sun? So most would say yellow. I'm gonna choose yellow for this one. But you don't have to do yellow. You can, you can make it a, a, a blue mountainscape with a blue, <laughs> with a blue sun if you want. Sometimes the sun looks blue. It's up to you. So there we go. All right, I've got my yellow sun. And I think I'm gonna stick with the warm color. So in coloring, you have your warm colors and your cool colors. So blue is a cool color and red is a warm color. Orange is a warm color. So I'm gonna stick with those for now. Or maybe brown. Brown's kind of a warm color too. All right, so for my first mountain here, I'm going to do orange and as and as I start to color this I like to ask myself questions like why why did I want to draw this in warm colors and not cool colors why warm and 
for me, maybe it's because I just got done talking about the canyons and how much I love them. For me, it makes me feel a sense of warmth when I think about mountains right now. So, yeah, that's something you can think about. Like, why do I like this color? Why do I like yellow? Is yellow your favorite color? Why? Is pink your favorite color? Why? And what does it make you feel? Does it make you feel joyful, happy? For me, warm colors, especially yellows and oranges, they make me think of hope. And one thing that I like to do when I'm drawing pictures, when I'm coloring, is if I think of a word that really, really kind of sums up how I'm feeling about what I'm drawing or even how I'm feeling in that moment, a lot of times I will write it on there. So here's some space. where you can draw. So you've got your mountains here. Maybe you're like, well, I have a word, you know, maybe your word is joy, or maybe your word is peace or fun or happy, or maybe it's a bunch of words. Maybe it's good time with my family. Maybe it's, I want to take a nap. <laughs> Whatever it is, just think of things that, that maybe bring you joy and, and, and make you think of happy things and peaceful things as you look at the mountains. So for me, that word is hope. So I'm gonna take my marker and I'm just gonna write the word hope. Four letters, H-O-P-E, hope. So when I look at the mountains, I think of hope. So I'm gonna keep coloring in here. And you can just make this however you want. You can use warm colors and cool colors. You can just do the cool colors. There you go. All right, got this brown color here. There we go. And it's okay if you color out the lines. It's okay if you don't get it right. And essentially what we've done here is we've made our own coloring sheet. We've made our own piece of art just by using lines and shapes. How cool is that? something something so simple and yet it can tell so many stories it can remind us of so many things maybe there's a place in the mountains that you hope to go someday maybe you can pull out an encyclopedia look up some pictures and get inspired and one day you'll look back and you'll say huh i remember when I was just thinking about that place. I was just thinking about it. Or maybe you can just use your imagination and come up with a place that, that doesn't even exist. You just made it up in your head. And that's really cool. And I think that that's a really fun, peaceful way to spend time. Doesn't matter how old you are, if you're three years old, if you're 93 years old, I think that there's room for everybody to color. There's room for all of us to draw places that bring us a sense of hope and peace, especially in times where it can be really scary and there's a lot of things going on that we maybe don't understand. We can take time to do that. And like I showed you before, you can you can really spend a lot of time with this and you can get some markers and you can you can say i, I want to use a series of blue landscapes um because blue to me means calm so i'm going to draw some blue landscapes or you can do some pink ones or whatever you like it's just really fun to be able to sit down and say through everything that's going on and all the places that we can't go and things that we can't do it's really neat when we can sit down and take time to to 
make space for things that, that bring us peace. So thank you all so much for watching. And I hope that I get to see some of what you created. And I hope that this was fun and that you, you keep creating even in seasons of waiting. Thank you so much. Thank you, Morgan. That was so wonderful. I oh. <laughs> I drew right along with you. And oh, you did. I did. Oh. Yes. And I I tell you, I I've always been a little intimidated with art. Uh, I don't think that part of me was nurtured very well as a kid. So mm. the way that you taught this practice was so good. Like I don't know if you can see. Oh, this I is love my it. First yes. One. Yeah. Yes. So I I'm, love it. And I'm already thinking that um, over the weekend yeah. I'll go back and I'll um, I, I actually want to have different paper and so I'll go back and use different paper and then yeah. go through the whole process with the outlining oh. and the coloring and stuff like I, I feel really drawn to, to do this practice it was oh. really, really really wonderful for me so mm. thank you for just being you and showing up today for us um, mm -hmm. you know what a gift I, I am really touched by your presence and the mm. way that you've invited us uh, into a way of being present uh, mm -hmm. with ourselves and with what's happening in our life. And I think there's something uh, really powerful about uh, connecting the mind with the heart and the body as you draw. Mm -hmm. uh, so I was, I was really touched by that. I wonder if you could say something about what it's like for you to sit down and, and do a piece of art. Like, what is your experience? Uh, what mm -hmm draws you like compels you into that space what's inviting to you about that yes yeah, so i i have been i actually um, i have dyslexia and as a kid it was a lot more prevalent and if you're a kid listening that's when sometimes your words and your, your letters they get all mixed up and it makes it harder to read and write so for me drawing lines and drawing shapes was a way that i could just kind of get things out of my head, even though it was harder for me to actually write words. And I love to write, but it just took a lot more work. <laughs> so it was something about that really, really simple going back and forth that just really helped me. Oh, I too can fill a page. So for me till this day, when I, and that, that was when I was six years old that I feel like I first really remember feeling that way and I'm, I'm 30 years old now. And for me, even just then when I'm doing that, it takes me back to that place. It takes me back to that, oh, I missed everything that's on my mind, everything that I can't figure out. I can still contribute. I can still make something even with simple lines and colors. Like I, lo I, I love using my iPad and I've got all these different art supplies and things, but I like to keep it really simple when I'm starting out because it just, it just reminds me of the yeah of my childhood honestly <laughs> oh, wonderful thank you for sharing that we uh we put into the chat at, earlier um when you when you began we we said i don't know if all the attendees saw but we we said if you'd like um i'm, I'm speaking to the attendees now if, if you all wanted to share a photo of your children enjoying the webinar to uh send that to chris.hewerts at gravitycenter.com and I just wanted to check in with Chris and see if anybody uh, sent in any photos that you might want to share with us. All right, this is super duper exciting. We have two oh. photos from folks out there who are following along. So let's see if I can put this up on the, on the screen and let me know if you can see this. Oh my goodness. Looks like oh. Olive and Ada Michigan was oh. on it concentrating oh, yeah. focusing oh, like yeah, really bringing her heart into oh, this oh yes and then morgan when you're talking about the grand canyon basil was like please show them when i was at the grand oh, canyon oh my goodness and so that was the hey, little oh. spot <laughs> that i think you were describing way down there at the yeah. bottom um <laughs> and then he's a little shy and a little nervous but he also wanted me to show you his Oh All right. my goodness. If there's still Thank time and some of you want to send, <laughs> send your pictures and we'll try to get them on here before that we wrap up. That is amazing. Oh my goodness. I, yeah, that just, that just made my whole month. 
Thank you, Olive. Thank you, Basil. That was <laughs> all I needed. Thank you. <laughs> oh, wow. Mm. So, Morgan, I wonder if you could say a little bit about um, what this experience has been like for you in this crisis with the coronavirus. Yes. Yeah, so, I um, this 2020 was a year that I was kind of planning to really step out of my comfort zone. I, I'm very much so more introverted. Um, I'm also at Enneagram type five and I don't, I'm not naturally drawn to like big social events. And I was like, this is the year I'm going to do that. I'm going to do more of that. I'm going to push myself to go further than I've ever gone. So we invested a lot into creating events and a schedule, travel, and all of these things. And it was all supposed to be happening literally right now, this weekend. And yeah, everything got canceled. Everything got canceled. So for me, it was such a it was such a a realization of like, wow, even when we have good intentions, even when I have good intentions to do things like sometimes I still have to take a pause from that and sometimes it's not about like oh what lesson am I going to learn in the moment it's just like you know this happened and I don't have to make sense of it right now let's just let me take care of my family and people that are important to me in my life and take care of myself and to continue to to spend time in and distrusting and, and praying and <laughs> and honestly it's it's been a, a really bittersweet time um, unfortunately I I've had some some loss in my family due to uh, the coronavirus um, and it's um and and even though it's a family who's in a different in a different state and not family that I was seeing every day it's just like whoa this yeah, this is real. And, you know, what really matters here is to just, to just be thankful for this life. And that's so much easier said than done. So, so yeah, it's been a lot of highs and lows. Um, um, today, today was a, a good day. I started out today. Um, I didn't have I didn't have a lot to do in the first half of the day. And Jacob, who you met earlier, he slept in a little bit. So I, I just, I woke up and I actually turned on Disney Plus and started watching Toy Story 4. <laughs> and I'm just like, yeah, that's Friday morning. <laughs> that's, that's what it's going to be. So, so yeah, it's, it's weird. It's like every day is the same, but then again, every day is different, if that makes sense. So it's like, I've been home every day. I'm seeing the same things, but it's like, oh, I watched Toy Story 4 <laughs> this morning. <laughs> Yesterday morning, I was responding to emails. So. <laughs> So yeah, lots of changes and yeah, it's a little bit of what's going on. <laughs> mm -hmm. Thank you for sharing that with us. I wonder if some of our attendees want to uh, have a chance to ask you a question or maybe share about their experience drawing with you today. So if any of these folks who are with us want to um, share something or ask a question, would you raise your hand? So there's a way next to your name where you can um, somehow raise your, your hand. And I'm not even sure how to explain this. I'm still learning this program. Oh, but there's somebody raised their hand. Two people have raised their hand. Okay, great. So let me, uh, let me allow Melissa to talk. Melissa, are you there? Oh, this is so cool. Hi. Hi, Hi Melissa. Melissa. Hi. Say your Harper. Um, I'm. My name's Harper. Oh, awesome! Well, wow. Well, my. <laughs> I was wondering what. Where's your favorite place to go visit? Oh, well, thank you for asking, that, Harper. My favorite place is the Grand Canyon. I love the Grand Canyon. And I've just been sitting here thinking about it quite a bit. Not so really like going to the beach. I live, I live about 20 minutes from the beach. So yeah, thank you for asking. Where's your favorite place to visit? Oh, oh. Here, let me, let me unmute Harper. Oh. <laughs> Harper, are you there? Yeah. Um, mine is probably um, Florida. Oh, awesome. Yeah, there's a lot of fun stuff in Florida. <laughs> Thank you, Harper. Thank you for being here and for sharing with us. 
I'm going to call on the next person here. Let's see who this is. Okay, hello, are you there? Hi, who is this? Vincenza. Can you say your name again, please? Vincenza. Oh, it's so nice to meet you. Thank you for, for being here with us. Did you have a question or something you wanted to share with Morgan? Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Um, what was, what is, um, Morgan, what is your favorite? thing to do while, what is your favorite thing to do um, then while you're in quarantine? Oh, yeah, that's a good question. You know, I've really been enjoying watching some movies with my family. And we've been watching like a lot of movies that we've seen before. So we've been going back and we went through, we've got, we're going through all the Pixar movies. So <laughs> Hence why I was watching Toy Story 4 this morning. I got a head start. So yeah, that's been a lot of fun. And then, um, you know, we've given ourselves, we were like, we're going to eat, we're going to eat a few more snacks than we normally do. So I've had some good Oreos. So yeah. <laughs> Thank you for, for Thank sharing you. with us. I'm going <laughs> to, I'm going to mute your microphone now and call in the next person here. Thanks for being with us. I love these questions. <laughs> Me too. Okay, let's see who's with us here. Hi, what's your name? Hey, oh. Felina, it's Holly and Callie. Hi, hi, hi there. Hi, y'all. Callie, you want to talk to her? What's your favorite thing to draw? Oh, my favorite thing to draw, you know, it's probably the mountains. I think so. I, I always, not always, but most of the time I start there. <laughs> I love drawing mountains because I feel like they're so easy. And yet when you look at them, it's like, oh, they really do look like mountains. So, yeah. Mm. yeah. Mm. Thank you, Callie, for your question. Yes, Callie, you. did you have a question too? Oh, no, I just wanted to say thank you, Morgan, for doing this. This was oh. so, so good for us this afternoon, for our family. So thank you for being oh. willing to be with us. Oh, of course, and thank you. This was this was a lot of fun. So it means a lot that you guys you guys had a lot of fun with it too. So thank you. And I was and I oh. was wanting to show you the picture of the mountain. Oh yeah, we took the pictures oh. and sent them to Chris. So oh, they'll be there awesome. soon. <laughs> yeah, so I'll be looking out for that. I can't wait to see it. I really can't. <laughs> hey. Okay. Hey. Sorry, that's all of her. <laughs> Sorry. Can you say hi? Say hi. Hi, hi Oliver. Hello. Can I talk to me? You can stretch no. Okay. <laughs> all right. Can you say thank you, Miss Morgan? You are welcome. Thank and you. Thank you. Thanks, Holly. Thank you. Oh, I love it. Okay, please feel free to raise your hand. Oh, we've got another another question here. If anybody else has a, a question or a comment, please uh, raise your hand in the panel there on the side of your computer and I'll call on you. Let's see about this one. Hello, are you there? My name. Hello, my name's um, Olive. Hi, Olive. Hi, Olive. Were you Olive. the one that we saw in the picture? Morgan likes to do um, better poems or drawings. Oh, well, thank you for asking. You know, I almost always start off with drawing because I feel like I never know what to say when I sit down to write. So I like to, I, I would say that I like to start drawing, but at the end of the day, I do think writing poetry is probably my favorite because I feel like when I get to write words down, then I get to talk about the things that I draw, if that makes sense. <laughs> Thank you for asking. What a cool question. Thank you. And I love your artwork, by the way. <laughs> okay, next one. Who, who do we have here? This is Vinny's computer. Who, who's there? Gabby. Gabriella. Gabriella, hi. Hi, Gabriella. Hi. 
Did you want to ask Morgan a question? Yeah. Okay, go ahead. What's your favorite place to go in Grand Canyon? Oh, my favorite place to go. There is, I, I don't know like the directions, but I know when you go into the, the main entrance of the park at, I guess that's the South Rim, um, when you go toward the right, we took like a, a Jeep trip one time and they took us over to this nice little pocket and it wasn't as crowded and you can just kind of stand there and watch the sunset and you can go down into the canyon a little bit but you don't have to fully commit to going all the way down so that that place holds a lot of really special memories for me and now that we're talking about it i want to go back because I haven't, I haven't been there in about five years so yeah i love it thank you for asking okay uh let's see we've got somebody else here um Oh, shoot. Okay, so Ellie Hunja's computer is using an older version of Zoom um, that does not permit this co Ellie's computer to talk. Um, so it's, let's, we're just going to try this. It says I can promote you to panelists. Let's see if, if that will work so that you can ask your question. Um, Hi, can you hear us? Hi, we can Hello. see you also. Hi. Say hi, How are you? Hello. What's your name? Kazia. Nice to meet you, Kazia. Thank you for being here. Hanging out with us. You want to show her your picture? <gasps> oh, my goodness. Oh. I love it. Oh, what word is that? What word did you write? She made up her own word. What was oh. it? What was it? Uh, hi. <laughs> oh, I love that. That is such a beautiful word. <laughs> did you have a question, Kazia? Yeah. What's your question? What's your favorite movie? Oh, my favorite movie. Hmm. Okay, I have a lot of favorite movies, but I'm going to go by the last movie that made me cry and think about it quite a bit, and that was Toy Story 4. <laughs> oh! <laughs> Seriously, I, I've watched that movie. I'm at a point now where I think I may be able to quote certain parts of it. <laughs> there, is a, there is a scene, and I think I'm actually going to write a poem about it. There is a scene at the end of that movie, I don't want to spoil it in case you haven't seen it, that to me talks about vulnerability in a way that I think I've never seen in a grown-up movie. So, yeah. I think that's the current favorite. That's beautiful. We like Toy Story 4 too, don't we? Especially oh, nice. Yeah. yeah. Oh, <laughs> I love it. Thank, yeah. thank you. Thank you, Kasia. Oh, thank, thank you for your you. question and your participation today. <laughs> yes, thank you. I love it. Okay, I think we have time for maybe one more. So let me see here. If we're lucky, we'll get two more, but I gotta watch the time. I'm gonna <laughs> Uh, turn Luke Pearson's uh, mic on. Uh, so, hello, are you there? I'm right here. Hi, who's this? Hello. Hello. You hello. Me? What's What's your name? Luke. Luke. Hi, Luke. Hi, Luke. So, how are you? Good. Luke, what? Thanks did for being here. Say. What's your favorite book? Oh, oh my favorite book. I have no idea. Okay, no lie. I, I'm not kidding. This is one of my favorite books. And my sister just got me the updated version of it for Christmas for my son, but I freaked out because I was like, this book right here, Children Just Like Me. I had the first edition growing up and it walks through little kids all around the world and what their daily lives are like. And <laughs> I love this book. So yeah, it's a fun way to travel the world without traveling the world. And it's, yeah, it got little kids and their families and what they eat for dinner on every continent. So this is the new version that just came out um, 
recently, but I had, I had the first edition growing up. It's no lie. That's one of my favorite books. <laughs> oh, thank you, Morgan. Thank you, Lulu. Thanks for asking. And we have time, I think, for one more question, but I want to let you all know that we've got uh, a lot of pictures that have come in from the different attendees today. So uh, before you go, uh, we're going to show all those pictures. So if you all want to stick around and hang out with us to the very end, we'll show you the pictures that have come in. Uh, but in the meantime, I'm going to call on Tara, Tara's computer and see who we have with us. Hi, can you hear me? Yes. Go on. Oh, that's an old picture. All right, Hi, go Tara. Hi. Hi there. Go ahead, Kenna. Um, Kenna is going to ask a question. Hi, oh, Kenna. Awesome. Hi, Kenna. Hi. I was wondering um, what about um, the mountains makes um, you have help? Oh, I love that question. I, so I think it's a lot of different things. And, and I think the, the biggest thing is when I was, when I was younger, I got a chance to go to, I, I live by a mountain called Stone Mountain. And Stone Mountain in Georgia, where I grew up, it's a place that has a lot of history. And it was, as I was learning about history, you know, sometimes history can, can be a little sad. And as a little kid, I was a little sad about that. And I just remember going up to the mountains with my family and my dad. And I remember him telling me about, um, and he was talking about hills and mountains and he was like, oh, it's, it's nice to have mountains because you could be on top. And there was this, there's a, a verse in the, in the Bible that he actually told me we we're on the way up the mountains. And it was like, I look up to the mountains and that's where my help comes from. And I was like, oh, I don't know what that means, but I like it. <laughs> I remember feeling that way as a kid. I was like, I don't know what that means. But I just associated mountains with looking up and when you're looking around and you're not seeing hope and you feel stuck, look up, look up. So in order to see the mountains, we have to look up and say, oh, there is more, there is something beyond where, I'm, where I am right now. So even if you can't get there yet, it's nice to be able to look up. So yeah, I hope that answers the question. Thanks, Morgan. Hey, oh, welcome. thank you. We know Cheryl Baco. We have a mutual. Oh, oh my gosh! Your yes. family to us. Yeah. Oh, oh my goodness! What a small thank world. Thank you so awesome. much. Oh yes, thank you. Oh, okay, wow. so you know what? I saw one more hand, and the hand has gone away. I just want to see uh -huh. if Andrew Kirkbride still wants to ask a question. Andrew, did you? Can you just raise your hand if you still want to contribute before we? Bring this web. Yeah. Okay. Here we go. Andrew, you get the very last question. Okay. Here we go. Hi. Hello. How are you? Good. What's your favorite Star Wars drawing? What's your oh. oh, my favorite style of drawing? Hmm. No. Oh, I'm sorry. What, what was your, my sister said, do you like Star Wars? Oh, yes. Yeah, Star Wars. I love Star Wars. I love <laughs> yes, I love Star Wars. I I didn't watch Star Wars to, just to, just to let you know. I didn't start watching Star Wars until like three years ago, so I'm I'm a little late. But there's a Star Wars land at Disney World, and all my favorite rides are there. So um, I build a lot of Star Wars Legos. Oh, you know those Star Wars Legos are really cool. I have seen them. I know exactly what you're talking about. That's next level. Do you get to, do you build cool things with them? Have you made anything yet? Yeah. Yeah, that's awesome. <laughs> thank you so much for your question. <laughs> thank and, you. And thank you all for your participation today. I'm going to turn things back over to uh, Chris, and we'll see what he has waiting for us here at the end of the show. And before I do that, thank you so much, Morgan, for your time and your oh. presence with us. It was really a joy to have you with us. Oh, well, thank you, Fuena. It really mm -hmm. was a joy. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. All thank right, you. Chris, come on back. All right. That was oh, awesome. I <laughs> and um, I um, wanted to let you know, Morgan, we are... Uh, have tons of Pixar. Oh my gosh. Uh, Toy Story no. toys on my desk in here. 
you know, uh, I already knew you guys are my kind of people. It just keeps getting better and better. Like, and then I have so many Star Wars toys <laughs> in my office. Oh. Disgusting. So let me um, I love it. Let me um, go back to these slides here. Yeah. Um, okay. So Chris, I think Morgan and I will, will go ahead and sign off here so that you can have the whole screen, okay? Sure, perfect. All right. Stop. And then let me um, go here and show you some more of these slides that came in of these gorgeous drawings. You're not gonna believe it. I'm gonna mess the names up, but can you all see these? Looks like we have Jasper um, rocking that with the, the, the brilliant sun. Looks like the McHales from California all joined in <laughs> and uh, love these people so much. You can't believe it. The Ox Handlers from Texas. Oh my God. Um, Vincenza and Gabriella from Los Angeles. And look at all of those crayons perfectly sort of laid out. Um, Drew from California was nailing it like a champ with his Star Wars toy on the desk. Yes. And then um, the Boyds from Hermosa Beach in a tent? Are you kidding me? That's where I want to be right now. And Zinko's from California, probably the best hair of anyone um, a part of the show. Sorry, everyone else, but I, I think you can't argue that. And look at the art. I mean, the blue, the birds, it's just fabulous. Um, Eliora and Josephine from Maryland. And uh, I, I'm just going to come back to Olive one last time in Michigan. If you sent pictures in and I didn't get to, to make a slide for you, I'm super duper sorry. I was trying to keep up with all that. And uh, if I misspelled or mispronounced your name, super duper sorry. But man, we're, we're super duper glad to have everybody here. We're so thankful for Morgan's presence and participation. You know, um, in, in some of the stories in, in, in some of the world's religions, uh, when they talk about the beginning, when, 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 when God created the heaven and the earth, what we, we always forget is that the very, very first thing we learn about God, the very, very first, first thing that we learn about love is that God and that love are creative. And, and from nothing, they create. And so every time you sit down to, to do something artistically, you're, you're practicing your divine mind. You're expressing love and you're putting a gift out into the world. And so thank you for doing that. Thank you for being with us today. I, I sure hope everybody has a great weekend. I'm going to put one last slide up here, and this is for the adults um, who were, were always um, glad to have you continue to join us. And so once again, this is just a simple reminder that our free weekly webinars are always Monday, Wednesdays, and Fridays from 4 to 5 p.m. Central. Uh, on Mondays, we will have um, mental health and, and whole health and, and, and medical professionals come in to just help us find our center and stay grounded. On Wednesdays, Flynn and I will, will guide a meditation practice and then have a kind of group discussion afterwards. And on Fridays, it's always kids contemplation um, for the inner child and all of us, as well as the little kids in each of our homes. So thank you so much, Morgan Harper Nichols. If you all don't have her book, you need to chase that down right away. Um, if you don't follow her on Instagram, get at it. And then, like I said, stay tuned. Me and Morgan got some things coming, um, some this year and, and maybe some next year. Hope you all have a happy Easter and a great weekend. Thank you so much for joining us. Bye-bye. Thank you so much. Thank you. Vinny. Thank you. Hi, Vinny. Hi, Vinny. Hi, Vinny. Hi, Kenna Kid and Kara. Hi. Hi. <laughs> so cute. We'll call you. All right, get up. Leave me.